Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today let's paint some bamboo. And just like in the other Let's Paint series, the whole idea here is I'm going to show you making this finished painting all the way from the initial sketch through to the block in and to the final deal, but I'm not going to focus on step by step. Instead, we're going to see a high level view, so you can just sort of conceptualize the big steps in play, and I'll reference other videos that'll give you a little more detail. Now at this point you've probably watched a few of the other Let's Paint series, and you might think, well how is this one different? I'm painting a single object on a white background. Well the other process videos I've showed have been pretty technical. They've really focused on Photoshop tricks to achieve a painterly result. Well as I paint this bamboo, the big question that I'm going to be asking is what could you do with a single brush? This one brush right here is all I'm going to use for the entire painting. You can see the brush is pretty basic. It has a little bit of texture, it's a little bit rectangular, but it's not all that fancy. And I'm going to be using this brush at various sizes to do the line drawing, to do the block in, and to do all the final polishing. One brush. Because as you know in my videos, I like using digital tricks. But I think if you're just starting out, it's important to know that you can do a lot with just one brush. So in today's video, we're just going to focus on the line drawing aspect. And then in the following videos, we are going to take it all the way through to the final. And to really prove my point, I've included a link for this brush at the bottom of the post, so go ahead and download it if you want to follow along with the series. When we look at this final result, we can see that it's pretty realistic. It's a nice, clean painting. And the secret to nice paintings is often nice line drawings. So I'm going to be spending some time on this drawing. And a great way to start an observational drawing is to just give yourself a framework. So the first thing I do here is just mark out a vertical line that shows the entire height of my image, and then I give myself a few crossbars just for where the major landmarks are. Does this look like bamboo? No, but it just gives me almost a ruler to draw against. It's going to help keep everything in the right place. Because details are important, yes, but big proportional relationships actually have a bigger impact than you might expect. So once that is in place, the next thing I'm going to do is start thinking in terms of form, not shape. As in, I'm going to think of this as very basic geometric primitives. So what if we were to envision this, instead of as bamboo, but as a stack of cylinders? Because really, if we simplify it down, it pretty much is just a few cylinders. In fact, what if instead of a bunch of cylinders, it was just one big cylinder? Well, this is the way I'm going to approach my drawing. I'm going to first put in these geometric shapes that I'm envisioning in my mind's eye, and only later will I then sort of refine them and carve them down into more specific shapes. So we're like a sculptor. We are thinking first in large block forms, and then later we're going to be adding detail. Now the leaves don't fit in quite as well to our cylinder metaphor. So what I'm going to make here are just sort of general envelopes that are kind of the large bounding box, and then later I'll sort of carve them down into their specific shapes. The same is true here for the frog in the bottom of the vase. And you'll notice I'm drawing these on individual layers because sometimes I just have to shift things around. It might be that I got the details or the shapes right, but the placement wrong. So if you work in layers, at least temporarily, you get a little bit more flexibility when it comes to laying in this initial groundwork. Now once I'm happy with the overall layout, I have my proportions correct, the large shapes are right, now it's just details. So I'm really going to speed up the footage for this last bit because this takes a while, but there's really nothing to it. There's nothing special about it. This just takes practice. So here I am adding details, I'm using the eraser, and I'm really kind of carving these big shapes into smaller ones. And eventually I'm left with a nice final line drawing. This is going to be very helpful for making the final painting, which we'll look at in future videos. But if you want to start your painting with a line drawing like this one, you have to understand the principles at work. We talked about drawing in terms of visual measuring. We made sure everything was in the right place by looking at proportion and visual simplification. And then we talked about building up the shapes, starting with basic primitives, and only later carving details. Now if any of these techniques are new to you, or you just want to learn more about them, make sure to check below the post, because I've linked to videos that give a lot more information. All right, so get out there and start your line drawing, and in the next video, we are going to continue with our block-in. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.